Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again. In today's video, an HOA president named Karen tried to evict me from my 150 year old property and put a lien on it despite me not being an HOA member. Here is what happened, let's dive right into the story. The house I live in has been around for 150 years. You astute readers out there will recognize that this is just after the end of the civil war. My great 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 grandfather, I'm not usually sure how many greats, but I recently had to check my facts, built it with his own bare hands. He built it after the war had flattened all the buildings on his land. He had people coming to make offers on it as much of the land in the area was dirt cheap after being stained with blood. He turned them all down though and brought his family back down as soon as it was standing. Now through its century and a half it has had a few additions and renovations, plumbing and electricity snaked their way through the walls, all the while its heart was kept strong. It was passed down through the generations until it fell into my father's hands. I was only the second man in my family born in a hospital, the first being my older brother, but we were no less shaped by it. Unfortunately, my brother was a victim of Vietnam, so I was the first man to graduate from college in my family. My father was a strong man in many ways, he was an only child, but he did not give his parents the time to wish that they could have had more. He worked the farm practically every day since he could walk and still found the time to woo a beautiful young wife back to the farm to help him staff it. He was firm and often strict but you would struggle to find a better role model than him. Me and my siblings were raised on the farm as well but he never let that get in the way of our education as it had for him. I think this is why he kept on having kids until mom put her foot down. Though as soon as we graduated high school he refused to let us dirty our hands until we had a college diploma. He was proud and we were proud of him. I graduated from college and got a job in the nearby city. I had apartments through the years but the farm was always home. Eventually his pride could not keep him standing any longer and he had to step away from the farm. It had not been profitable for the past decade with the city growing more and more anyway but that had not stopped him. Seeing him lie still was so far from what we knew of him that many of us were relieved when he passed and figured he would find his way to the most demanding work up in heaven. Being the oldest living son left the farm in my hands. I think I might have said enough to make it clear that this farm is as much a part of the family as any location can be. My lifeblood runs through this place and if you think I hesitated for a second when I had the option to move my family out here in exchange for an extra 30 minutes on my commute then you would be wrong. Also notably, the city grew long after my home had broken in the land. When I inherited the place, the area around me was to be the newest suburban escape from the city, a satellite town or something like that. I had my fun turning down the offers for the land and would often make a game of fighting them off. We would have a billboard with all our vanquished foes and their proposed contracts. My lawyer told me it was best to keep the document, so why not make a display? I never liked hunting, but I assume it was the same satisfaction of having a 12 pointer up on the living room wall. The best part of the display in either case seemed to be passing the art down to my own children. I know any salesman that tries to cheat them will be in for a long fight. By the time I came along, the housing development had been completed. The letters I received that were not commercial real estate offers were usually from the HOA requesting that I join the association and put my land under their protection. As if my land needs the protection of a group of soft middle-aged couples. I promptly replied as I always did to anything trying to tarnish my land and pinned away copies of the letters as usual. Eventually they quieted down, as it was offer slow to a trickle when the fateful envelope came in the mail. This made it somewhat notable, what really made this one unique was that it was the warning of the eventual eviction that would come without payment starting towards a lien. A lien in the hands of something as silly as an HOA. I read through the rest of the document and discovered that they claimed to hold a lien over my 150 year old house in order to recoup 5 years of missed fees and dues. First thing to do was calm down to make sure that I did not strangle and beat the first person I came across. Second, call my lawyer and schedule a meeting. Third, go and see if the person who sent this letter had recently escaped from a padded cell. I made my way through a white suburban purgatory of middle class bureaucracy until I found myself across the desk from Karen. She was the proud president of the HOA that operated the neighboring housing development and, only in her delusions, my property. 
Her office was situated just off of her pristine foyer in her cookie cutter house. Makeup, a perm and an excess of hairspray made her look just as artificial as her landscaped lawn. I set the letter down on her desk and asked simply, could you explain this letter to me, Karen? Karen barely glanced at the letter, I could see her suppress the smug grin. She knew what she had done. That letter is simply the proper process of the law. There are consequences for irresponsible and blatant disregard for civil responsibilities. I'm quite aware of that. What I'm unaware of is just when my home became included into this HOA when I have not even signed any contracts. Karen replied with a tight-lipped, Look, OP, I'm deeply sorry for the loss of your father a few years back. I don't believe I ever got to give you my condolences. I had a good relationship with your father and before he passed, he decided to make sure his land was cared for by joining my HOA. I leaned forward and put my hand down on the letter. My father made sure the land was cared for when he left it to me. The last thing anyone in my family would do is sign away any of our ownership to anyone. I restrained myself from any specific targeting against the HOA, but I'd heard enough of my dad's rants to know that his opinion was not as kind as I was at that moment. So I asked for a copy of the contract and after Karen initially refused, I told her that I would not leave her property until I had the contract that should be open information to the owner of the home it refers to. We found a compromise and I must say, they have a very convincing signature from my father. I did know him a bit better than them, in fact I might have even known what he was doing at the same time as this notary witnessed him sign. I called my lawyer to protect myself, I needed to make sure that I was not about to lose the home that had been in my family for six generations. Karen called hers to attack the moment I walked out of her office if I had to guess. The lawsuit was brought to me a day or two later, allegedly I was drastically outside of the conditions set upon me by a contract I was beholden to and to make it even better I apparently assaulted her in her own home. What was merely a distant threat in the notification that started this mess was now imminent. She wanted my home right now. Me and my lawyer found ourselves in the courtroom not long after. Karen had her own lawyer, well paid for by the dues of the HOA members and her defense in place even if it was weak. Oh, did I confuse you all with that sudden shift to her being in the chair of defense? Well, her lawsuit against me never made it to the courtroom. She brought forward the contract that my father allegedly signed and then tied many of my misdated letters of rejection to notifications of past due payments they sent to me. Finally, they revealed a notification of the lien being placed on my property after the past due payments which did not need my assent. I replied with the information that my father was in surgery on the day he was supposedly witnessed signing the contract and even if he had the time to sign, he would not have been in the right mind because of anesthetics. Then they saw my entire trophy cabinet displayed with copies of all my letters and the letters that had prompted them. They then settled and removed the lien. My lawyer and I decided that was too easy for Karen, so we looked into a few different state regulations that were tied to the letters and we investigated a bit deeper. We found that the letters sent to me exceeded many of the state regulations and could be considered harassment. It did not hurt that we had evidence of documents we could prove as forged as well. We also discovered that those who were paying the dues were paying money that could be tracked to accounts Karen had control over that were not tied to the HOA. So basically, harassment, fraud, embezzlement, we had a nice little rap sheet built up when we brought her to court with criminal charges. She won't ever be in charge of anything if she makes it out of prison and I can live with that. And yeah, ripe stars, let's hope this Karen never gets control over a neighborhood again. She was a terrible little dictator. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. So I, 33 male, have been living in a nice neighborhood a few hours away from a big city in Estonia for six years now. I am currently in a long distance relationship and enjoying my life as a cowboy. I am a big fan of American cowboys and I try to recreate the traditional cowboy lifestyle. My neighborhood has 1.5 acres of land for every household but I was able to get two plots side by side and convert it all into a nice 3 acre space. I know it sounds like a lot but this space is for my own two story house, a small cow shed for my three cows and two dog houses. I also have a YouTube account. Nothing big, I don't post any crazy stuff but I one day saw the video of someone attaching a GoPro to their dog and thought of doing the same for my cows. My neighbors love that video so I decided to attach GoPros on all my cows. 
I know this sounds random, but just you wait. This incident happened four years ago when I only had two cows. Having such a big space in a small neighborhood meant you have the attention of almost everybody, especially the little children. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't have anything against children, but letting anything smaller than four feet go near a huge cow is never a good idea. Thankfully, my neighbors understand my reluctance to let their children near my cows. They only ask to let their children play with my dogs. After a year of having such considerate neighbors, I kind of got spoiled and told them they did not need to ask my permission to play with my dogs. Big mistake. That summer, a new family moved in the empty house in front of me. I was excited to meet them until I heard the screams of the children as soon as they got out of their minivan. I then watched as this 40-something woman screams at her teenagers to be quiet before shouting orders at the poor employees who were shifting her stuff. It was a two-hour-long ordeal of screaming and shouting and I was already dreading living in front of a Karen. I had enough experience to know that I should not approach people like this, but that proved to be pointless when the woman rang my door. Not my gate, my door. Maybe it was my fault I had left the gate to my property unlocked because, as I said, I had told the neighbors they can come at any time to play with the dogs. I opened the door and the conversation went something like this. Karen, nice to meet you. We have recently moved in that house. Points to the house opposite of mine, me, smiling through the pane. Ah, uh, I noticed. I hope you have a nice time. Karen, thanks. You combined two plots. Wow. Big family, huh? Me? No, I'm single. Karen looks at me like I had offended her three previous generations. You bought three acres of land all for yourself? Me and my animals. Karen, sounds like a waste. Me, trying to keep in all the insults because god, this woman is annoying. What brought you here? Karen, my husband went to the military and... Me, no, what brought you here on my property? Karen, oh, my boys love dogs. Me, and? Karen, I wanted them to play here. At that moment I saw one of her teenagers throw a rock at my dog hitting him on his belly. I pushed past her to go outside, but before I could do anything, my other dog who was watching from my porch had already lunged on the dumb teenager. Karen, oh god, son's name, get away! My animals are not vicious by any manner, so even though it looked like my dog was gonna bite this brat's ankle, all he did was pull at his shoes to scare him off. Karen, train your dumb dogs, he almost ate my boy. Me, it's not my dogs that need training. Karen, they do. Look, my poor boy is so traumatized. I cannot believe you house wild animals. This is not safe. Me, there are six-year-olds that play with these dogs and are completely fine. My animals are not the problem. Karen Hafsan raises her chin. I will let this go if you let my boys play with your cows. They have never seen one and... Me, absolutely not. If your brats cannot act around these dogs, they will get trampled over by my cows. Karen, so you do admit your animals are wild. Me, believe that if you want, now get off my property. I could hear this Karen whisper profanities at me, but I don't care. I lock the gate as soon as this family is out and text my girlfriend about everything that happened today. She tells me that I should be careful because these people cannot take no for an answer. Lo and behold, she was right. Just two days after this Karen moves in, she again tries to get through the gate. This time it is locked so she screams from the street to let me in because her boys had a rough day and wanted to feel the calming energy of the cows. Her blabbering got the attention of her neighbor who politely tells her that I don't allow children near my cows but this Karen says rather haughtily that her sons are mature. Yeah sure. Anyways, I ignore her and go about my day. This continues on for another two weeks. Karen comes to my gate, I ignore her and she shouts some more and then leaves. One day, I came home late after spending the night at the vet. One of my dogs got an ear infection and I had to rush him to the hospital. So, it was 6am by the time I got back and as soon as I laid down on my bed, I was fast asleep. I had kept my dogs in my bedroom that day. They were both scared and I knew they needed to be near me. I woke up to my not sick dog barking at the window. I was instantly on alert and rushed out my door to see this Karen on the street screaming at my two cows that were on her property while several of my neighbors are watching the scene. Karen, you! She comes barreling at me. There is a scratch on her forehead and a cut on her palm. How can you have such wild animals? Me, why are they on your property? 
Karen, my boys brought them out to play with them, but instead your wild cows shattered the windows of my house and almost killed my boys. You will pay for this. Me? Pay for what? Your stupidity? The Karen curses some more before taking her phone out. I roll my eyes at her behavior and start walking near her house to get my cows back. Karen, don't you take them away from my boys or I swear I will shoot them. I ignore her and kept walking. I gently coax my beloved cows out her property and towards my own, but this Karen comes to stand in front of my gate preventing us from going in. That was also when I heard the sirens of the police. Karen, help! She screams as soon as the officers come out. He had his wild animals attack me and my boys. Look at what they did to my house. Me, that's not true. She and her children broke into my property, coaxed my cows out, but then could not control them. I have everything recorded on these GoPros that my cows wear. I could see the Karen's face going pale at my words. I wonder how dumb you have to be to not notice these cameras. The police officers ask me why I have GoPros on my kettle and I tell them about my YouTube channel. My neighbors back me up and I invite the officers inside to watch the video. The Karen then tries to run away but the neighbors catch her two sons. She comes back screaming but instead gets caught by the officers. Officer, we will need to take the evidence with us. Me, no problem, please just get her away from me. The whole neighborhood watched as the screaming Karen and her wailing children are put in the car and driven away. I finally let my cows inside to their shed and let a few children pet them as I look them over. A week later I get the news that a restraining order has been put on the Karen and she'll be moving away from our neighborhood. I let out the biggest sigh of relief and thank the officer who had come to give me my GoPros back. Since then we have had no Karens and my cows had become accustomed to having children near them. And yeah ripe stars, recently I have noticed a sort of reoccurring pattern with these Karens which is that they are not only out of touch with reality but also totally out of touch with nature because often they absolutely hate animals and especially farmers. I really don't know what is wrong with these Karens, maybe it's some kind of mental issue, I have no idea. If you have ever lived near any awful neighbors, please let us know in the comments about what happened. Anyway, the next one is titled Amazing Revenge. So this is a story of my friend Fred. He had been married for 20 years. He takes the wife to anniversary dinner at an upscale restaurant whereupon she informs him she wants a divorce. This was typical behavior for her. Instead of waiting for a more appropriate time to break the news, she decided to do it in the middle of the fancy dinner where lots of people would witness Fred's dismay and embarrassment. There was always lots of drama with her. She was a self-entitled spoiled Karen. Fred took it rather well, all things considered, they were not getting along and found out later that she was having an affair. He did multiple things to attempt to make the divorce easy, including creating a complete itemized inventory list of all belongings, made her a copy and asked that she check off what she wanted. It started out acrimonious, but it soon became the divorce from hell. Her demands became more and more ludicrous and the attorney fees kept increasing, so he eventually caved in and agreed to her every demand. Fast forward about 18 months later, the divorce is finalized. During this time Fred has met another woman, they get married shortly after the divorce is done. The ex-wife shows up one day and is in tears, the man who she left Fred for has dumped her. Fred and his new wife are gracious and console her, Fred is a nice guy and is polite during this but he is still harboring a lot of resentment. So this starts a weird relationship, ex-wife started calling Fred and the new wife just to talk and would even drop by on occasion. During one phone call in which she asks to borrow some money, Fred brings up the funeral plots he had purchased when they were married. He offers to buy her plot instead of loaning her money, he knew that she would never pay it back anyway. She agrees to it but demands a crazy number, maybe 20 grand, I cannot remember. Then Fred is livid, he has had enough of her. Cue the revenge, Fred stood on this for a while and then a fortuitous opportunity came along. The stepfather of the ex-wife died unexpectedly, the ex despised him and had nothing to do with the man. He had divorced her mother years ago. Fred liked him though, even went to the funeral. When speaking with the other family members he learned that there was no pre-planned funeral arrangements and money was tight. Fred stepped up and donated his funeral plot for the burial. This is the plot that is beside her funeral plot, the one she wanted to sell to Fred, which he already paid for. 
She refused to attend the funeral, so she does not yet know about Fred's generosity. And now it's a waiting game. One day she will find out. Fred grins like a baby, who just crapped his diaper every time he tells of his deed. The next one is titled Petty Revenge Right Here. So this happened nearly five years ago, when I had first become a concierge at a high-rise condominium. I originally worked in the management office helping pick up the slack since the office was and still is overworked and understaffed. This is par for the course as the entire building is understaffed, including of course the concierge position. At the time it was only the weekend shift that needed to be filled and I was given a pay raise to fill the Sunday morning 7am to 3.30pm time. The shifts are pretty simple. Morning, afternoon and night shift with simple work to answer phones, coordinate valets to valid cars and other simple tasks. I have it incredibly easy because Sunday is pretty much dead, especially since the majority of the residents are retired. Two thing I was very good about were my locks, which were very clear and concise, and the cleanliness of the desk. However, not too long after I started working as a concierge, Terry, the weekday morning shift concierge whom I would relieve for his lunch break, began to feel threatened by me as I could easily keep on top of residents, guests, contractors, packages and cars without much issue. It was one day I was working during the week that Terry had commented when he came in on Monday that the desk was a mess. Mind you, I worked the morning shift on Sunday, I had no control nor was slash am I responsible for the concierge before me or after me. Still, I was irritated that he commented on the desk being a mess like it was my fault. So when the next Sunday rolled around, I went ahead and did my usual tidying up, but I extended it to cleaning out and organizing the drawers, throwing out old trash and the like, and I found a gold mine. I had not realized it immediately, but I found a giant stash of business cards from lord knows how many people. I knew Terry was the one who had collected them all, but he was the one who had said I needed to keep the desk tidy, so I did what anyone seeking petty revenge would do and threw away nearly 400 business cards. Was it petty? Hell yeah! Did I have a crap eating grin? You know it. Did it get even bigger when he asked about them the next day? You bet your ass it did. And the next one is titled, My Mother, the Mega Karen. This story is about my mother. And yes, she is a Mega Karen and unfortunately, I've had to put up with her most of my life. This happened when I was a teenager, around 15. We went out for dinner at a local restaurant that did all-you-can-eat buffets. I should mention that my mother has long, thick and curly hair and she never ties it up, which is important for later. We got our dinner and sat down to eat and all was going well. I was surprised at how well my mom was doing, by this point she should have found something to complain about by now. And then it happened, she looked down at her plate and said, oh my god, look at this, there is a flipping hair in my food. Me knowing exactly what she was doing, mom, that is your hair, mom, uh, no, that's not my hair. The way she was talking was obviously dramatized for effect and she was beginning to get louder and drawing attention from the other diners. She continued to cause a scene and get more irritating, drawing more attention to herself and inadvertently me. I wanted to sink into my chair from embarrassment. Not long after she started her fake tantrum, the waitress came over to see what the problem was. Waitress? How is it all going here? What seems to be the problem? Mom, there is a hair in my food. Waitress? Um, okay. Mom, getting furious at the lack of care from the waitress. Well then, what are you gonna do about it? We deserve to have our meals for free. This is horrible customer service. Waitress, with a smirk across her face, I'm sorry you're not satisfied with our food. Would you like to speak to the chef? Mom, looking smug that she thought she won, yes. I would for sure. I was confused at this point, not understanding why the waitress did not seem to care, even though I knew my mom was lying, but it soon became clear why. A few minutes later, a man came out from the back of the store and walked right up to our table. And my mom's face went ghost white and her jaw dropped. The chef was bald. Not balding, but so bald that you could see a reflection on his shiny scalp. Chef, hi there, how are things this evening? What seems to be the problem? Mom, well, there's a hair in my food. Chef smiling, I'm sorry to hear that ma'am, but unless I've miraculously grown a full beard of hair on my walk over to your table, you can see I'm very much bald. And as I'm the only chef working tonight, that's clearly not my hair. Mom, Chef, is that all for now? I need to get back to work. Without waiting for an answer, he turned and walked back to the kitchen, but not before I mouthed, sorry, to him as he left. 
I knew better than to say anything to my mom after this, but I had a smile on my face for the rest of the night. And yeah, Ripe Stars, I'm curious, do you have any family members that often act like Karens? I gotta say, I am happy to say that I don't, and I would probably be really upset if I had a mom or an aunt or whatever that acts like this. I don't even know how you would deal with a situation like this, because, I mean, after all, it's family, so you cannot really be that mean to them, I guess. And with this, we have reached the end of the video. However, if you cannot get enough of my content, please check out my endless playlist, where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance, and I hope to see you again tomorrow.